For those of you wanting to see another camcorder video, you're not going to be disappointed. Today I have a Sony CCD TRV30. This was an 8mm Handycam with a flip out screen. And this one does not play back. And it's not heads that are dirty because that has already been tried. In fact, the cleaning tape has been run through this thing about six times and it's still bad. So it's a problem in the circuit. Let's figure it out. I've got here a Sony CCD TR V30. This is a 8mm Handycam. Complaint on it is it does not play. The heads have been repeatedly cleaned and it does not play. Looks like a bad head or a dirty head. As I say, the heads have been cleaned on this with a head cleaning tape multiple times and they have not come clean. Therefore, it's likely something in the video amplifier that is not working. Could be a bad head, could be a bad uh, connector where it connects to the board, or it could be something in the preamp. So this one we're going to have to disassemble and see where the problem lies on this one. Also looks like it does not want to eject the tape. Oh, there we go. So let's get started. So first things first, let's take the hand strap off it. Nothing makes working on equipment harder than when you're dealing with a hand strap that gets in the way. So that's the first thing. This camera is actually mine. Uh, it was given to me. So once it's uh, repaired, I will probably uh, put it up for sale. Or I'll keep it as a spare, depending on what. I think this is a B mechanism, so um, I'll likely keep this one as a, a spare just because for parts. But let's see if I can get it going first see what the problem is could be capacitors too Sony was good as they marked all the screws that needed to come out with an arrow so I'll just remove the arrow mark screws and you're off to the races. Let's remove all the screws here. Uh, is this a B or an A? This might be an A mechanism. I think this is an A mechanism on this one, which is the same as that, uh, that Canon. I think this might be an A. I'll find out. I'll know when I get it apart, whether it's an A or B. It looks like it might be an A mechanism. So I'll put on some more light here so I can see what I'm doing. The Sony's were always nice and easy to work on. Well, com compared to Canon. Canon were not, not, not friendly cam camcorders to work on. They were always kind of a bit of a joke. The Sony's actually came apart relatively easy. Just a couple of connectors here to hold the... the uh, front cover on and uh, put all the screws on the side the side cover should pop off just like that and what I'm thinking is there's a uh, there's a connector on the bottom here that sometimes gives trouble this one is an A mechanism exactly the same one as that uh, Canon I wonder if the guide is loose on this one. Let's see whether the guides are loose. Let me pull out. I got my little pliers back again. These were missing for the longest time. They turned up in my 22 year old room. She had borrowed them. This is the same one that broke my, my little blue screwdriver. She borrowed them and then never returned them. 
but she's moved out. So when she's cleaning up her room, I found my pliers. Is this loose? Nope, this one's not loose. Yeah, that one's good. That one's not falling out. That's good. How about this one? Good. Not loose. What happens is these guides come loose after a while and they work their way loose and they fall out and cause many problems. I gotta get the other side off of this as well. I think I got all the screws out. I'm just looking to make sure that I didn't miss any screws. And then the whole camera, oh, one more screw up here. The whole camera will slide out. battery on the front here and then there's basically just uh, a couple ribbon cables to connect the sideboard and the viewfinder to the main board I'm going to undo those ribbon cables here take out that one and then take out these two you gotta be really careful with these ribbon cables because they do tear really easy if you're not careful so pull them straight up. Okay, um, this is what I'm looking for on this, this camera here. These connectors on the bottom of this board. I'm gonna undo this screw. Real common problem on these. When you get a machine that you've cleaned the heads and you've cleaned them and you've cleaned them and you've cleaned them, and don't clean them with a cleaning tape more than four times because if they don't come clean within four cycles, it's not a dirty head, okay? It's another problem. And it's very likely the problem that I'm going to show you here on the, um, the head drum. The head drum plugs in, there's a connector right here and there's another connector right there. And what happens is these connectors, uh, this is what transfers the video signal over. The other connector for the drum motor is over here we remove this connector here we can and remove the the loading motor connector up here we can actually unplug this board and this is the other connector to the drum okay so these connectors go to the drum motor and the capstan motor and this is the video uh, connector here I just want to open them up so that they can be reseated and usually what we put on these, we'll put a, a contact cleaner like deoxid or something, wipe it on here. I'm going to use D100, the liquid pure stuff, just to uh, clean these connectors off. And I'll reseat these. We're going to clean this connector and reseat that. And then we're going to try this thing and see whether that's going to fix the picture problem. And in many cases it does. It looks like this was this was... It looks like somebody's put grease on here at some point because, I mean, that looks looks like yellow grease on there at some point. Okay, I've got my keg deoxid D100, 100% solution. I'm going to put some on this connector here. I'm going to put some on these connectors down here. And then I'm going to reseat. I'm going to reseat this board. Like that. Plug this one back in over here. And I'm going to put some um, deoxid on the connectors. To go into the uh, this ribbon which is what connects the video head to the main board there's, it's actually two connectors because there's another one here that you should take apart just by loosening that off and pull this connector off because you want to get some deoxid also onto these contacts here so I'm going to put some deoxid on here and 
and onto here. When you reseat this connector, make sure your contacts, which are on this side here, line up with the contacts on the little flexible board. How you'll know you're putting it in the right way is if you look at this label here, the label faces towards you. The white part of the connector is on the bottom side. Snap that together. Then we're going to plug the connector in like that. And now we can reseat the head connector. Oh, we should uh, put some deoxid on here too. And now we can reseat that connector. It only goes on one way, so if you if you put this on backwards, it won't fit. So it only goes on one way. Next, I will cap my bottle of deoxid. So I don't spill it. We're going to put the the uh, head shield back on. It clips in on the back of the, there's a um, shield back here that it clips under. You also have to make sure that you get the uh, ground for the head through here. This tab here goes on the top side of this shield. So sometimes it's easier to get it through there first and then clip it in the silver screw goes in place there okay that's got that part ready Make sure everything else is plugged in, and uh, we should be ready for testing the unit. Now, I do have to connect these cables up because the power switch is on the front here. Speaking of power switch, that's another issue that sometimes happens on these if they won't turn on. It's these pin switches here need to be cleaned. But we do have to connect this in order to, uh, to test it. So first things first, let me connect the two ribbon connectors now when I used to fix these things when I was in the business I never put deoxid on them I just pull them apart and push them back together because the mechanical separating and reseating the connectors was generally all that was needed to uh, make them work believe it or not um, so even if you don't have cleaner around, uh, it's going to work if you just separate them and put them back together. And that's just because of the, the mechanical action will break any oxidation on the terminals. Drop the camera back into its into its base. The power connector slides into a slot on the back here. Plug in the loading motor. This is the power connector for the battery. Going to all this trouble because I'm pretty confident that this thing is going to work once I uh, get it going here. So we'll turn it on. Load up a tape. Whatever I did with the tape. LCD viewfinder out. We get a picture. We get a picture. If I plug in the monitor, we have a picture.
drop out on the tape. That looked like a momentary head clog. Oh, there's some damage on this tape. You can see it. But anyway, hey, it's working. That's uh, there she blows. God, that looks like crap. You know, really, water looks terrible. Water looks terrible on on um, on video. It, it it just looks horrible. This video is shot in court. 4K. I think my head's just clogged up on this. Maybe not. Uh, the tape's got some damage to it. Yeah, this was shot in 4K and uh, recorded onto uh, onto 8 millimeter for a test tape. <laughs> it looks like. I mean, analog video, I'm sorry. For you guys that love your analog video stuff, analog video really does suck. <laughs> sorry. You're terrible. Terrible. Ah, garbage. If you saw the original, if you saw this original uh, video, Sony tape, crap. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a stupid tape. It's a... Uh, This is the Sony tape with all the dropouts. This is a high grade. One of these eight millimeter. I think this is a high grade one. Anyway, that's Sony. Sony garbage. Let's make a recording. Can make a recording on this tape. I think we're okay. This tape has got damage to it. And when I mean damage, I mean it's got physical damage. These uh, tapes have been run through machines, uh, camcorders and stuff that uh, have not been in very good shape and they have damaged the tape. Anyway, um, looks like it's working. Yep, it's it's working. Okay, that's um, a quick one on how to deal with the connector problem on this A uh, mechanism Sony. When you see these cameras that have got weird problems, that's just one of the problems. Um, some of the other problems is a picture that's, that's halfway. You get the the uh, the vertical blanking, the vertical sync bar halfway through the screen, or uh, no color, half color, um, fluttering picture. They're all symptoms of the same thing. And it's that multi-connector that develops bad connections or bad connectivity. It's not so much bad connections. It's just it's bad connectivity between the ribbon cable and the board. It's um, a pretty, pretty common problem on these units. And uh, I fixed... In my career in the business, when we were fixing a lot of camcorders, I would see you know, that problem probably you know, two or three times a month. It was pretty, pretty common on these units that would have a problem like that. So now I've got another working 8mm camera that uh, I may just very well sell because I get people that are asking me all the time if I've got any 8mm. I won't sell high 8 gear, but uh, because I can I, I can use high 8 gear. But the, and same with digital 8. If I get a digital 8 camera that uh, in for repair that, or if someone gives me one, I won't typically sell digital 8 or high 8 gear because I can use it for transferring uh, tapes over. The regular 8 ones though, I don't really need them because I've got the digital 8 decks, so when I get a, a regular 8 deck like this, I tend to uh, try to find it a new home. I just have to find it an adapter because the adapter I'm using is mine, and I don't want to part with the, 
the power adapter. So I gotta find a power adapter for this thing. I probably have one around here too, but I gotta find one before I sell this one, just because say the one that's over here is uh, is is what for another another camera that I've got. Hardest part, getting these ribbon cables back in after the fact. Without damaging them. Because these things are, are super easy to break if you're not careful. They will come apart. It might be easier if I take that one out just so that I can get a little more slack here to fish this one in from the top. Would you like to have been the guy at the factory? Just here's your job: plug the connectors in, put the camera together, put this part final assembly right. Guy would be guy going crazy, having to plug all these silly plugs in and put the put the body of the camera together. And he's got like you know, ten seconds to do it because the uh, the uh, assembly line's coming down. The next one's right there, so it's got 10 seconds to plug this thing in. Five seconds to plug this thing in and move on to the next one. Or there's going to be a, a traffic jam of, of cameras. How come that's so hard to plug in? Probably because it's easier to plug this one in and do the other one. What do you guys think? There, that's that one. Here comes the rain again. You guys can probably hear that now. It just poured last night. And yesterday, it was just, it was one of those days where it didn't want to go out anywhere. I was thankful that I wasn't working because uh, it would have been an ugly day to be working outside yesterday. And it's supposed to be like that tomorrow, and I have to work. <laughs> so. screws here where do they go on there and there should be there should be one more yeah, one there and then the two that hold the door on There, it's back together. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. You guys thought I forgot that one. Ha. Ah.